Hello, my name is Jenny Rawling and I'm a trustee of the UK Infantile Spasms Trust. One of the things that we try and do at UKIST is to raise awareness of infantile spasms amongst communities where children are at increased risk. Children with Down syndrome have a 3-5% to 5 chance of developing infantile spasms. So if you do nothing else, please watch our short information video. We're then going to listen to Jude Simpson, who is a parent of a child with Down syndrome who also developed infantile spasms, and then we'll lead you to some sources of extra information. Thanks for your attention. Infantile spasms, IS, is a rare seizure disorder that occurs in young children, usually less than one year of age. About 400 children a year are diagnosed in the UK. The average age of onset is around four months, but some children may experience spasms as early as one month or as late as two years. It often has a very subtle appearance, so it's difficult for parents to recognise that it is a serious problem. The typical pattern is a sudden bending forward and stiffening of the body, arms and legs. Sometimes the arms and legs are flung outwards. These are called extensor spasms. Usually they affect both sides of the body equally. Episodes happen in a cluster, with each episode lasting just one or two seconds. Then there's a pause for a few seconds, followed by a further spasm. A child having infantile spasms may only have little head drops that do not appear to be anything serious. IS can appear similar to common disorders such as normal startle reflex, colic or reflux. Infantile spasms is in fact much more serious than the type of generalised seizure that most people would immediately recognise because a child with IS has a constant chaotic brainwave pattern that causes loss of skills and brain damage. It is very important to recognise that a child has infantile spasms as quickly as possible. The longer the spasms last before they are treated and controlled, the greater the impact on future development. If you suspect your child might have IS, then getting an EEG done straight away is a priority. In the UK, take your child to the A&E department at the nearest big children's hospital. Video footage is very helpful in getting a diagnosis. We would like to offer our support to anyone that is concerned their child might have IS. Find us on Facebook or on our website. Hi, my name's Jude. I want to talk to you a little bit about infantile spasms um, and the link between infantile spasms and Down syndrome. Um, I'm not a doctor, um, but my daughter, Vita, was diagnosed with infantile spasms in May 2021. And thanks to awareness raising by PADS, particularly the New Parent Group, um, and the UK Infantile Spasms Trust, we recognised the spasms really quickly um, and were able to get her treatment very, very rapidly. Um, everybody's story is different and we were incredibly lucky. Her, her treatment worked very quickly, it stopped her seizures very quickly. Um, and <clears throat> after uh, a it's about six months on medication, um, which had some relatively significant side effects during that time. But once she came off it, um, she remained seizure free. She's no longer taking any medication. And since then, her development is soaring. She's doing brilliantly. Um, so, as I say, we've been really lucky um, so far. Um, it's really, really, really important that parents or babies with Down syndrome are aware of infantile spasms. Um, while they're still uncommon and in the general population, they're extremely rare and um, they affect about 0.02% of babies, which is around one in 5,000. Um, but in children with Down syndrome, they affect between three and 5% of babies, which is about one in 20, um, or up to one in 20. So they're still, they're still uncommon. It, not, that means 19 out of 20 children won't have infantile spasms, but they're common enough that it's crucial um, that all of us know exactly what to look out for and what to do if we see um, 
movements that we're worried about in our babies, movements that are occurring in clusters, movements where there's um, a change of um, expression or eye roll with them, um, anything where we think there's behaviour changes like a lack of smiling or um, loss of skills um, that's happening at the same time. Um, doctors don't know why infantile spasms are more likely to occur in children with Down syndrome. It might be that there are some slight structural differences in the brain um, that can lead to our babies being more susceptible to it. Um, and it might be that there are some other factors that increase the likelihood. Um, we know that babies with Down syndrome who also have heart problems or hypertension seem to be at higher risk. Um, my daughter didn't have either of those. Her only diagnosis prior to the spasms was um, Down syndrome. And it's really important. We all need to be aware of um, infantile spasms, regardless of any other comorbidities, any other conditions that um, your child might have, as well as Down syndrome. Um, as you'll have seen in the awareness raising video, if you see movements that you think could be infantile spasms, it is incredibly important to get your child seen as an emergency. Um, being treated quickly gives your child the best possible chance of a good outcome. Um, there's some evidence that on average, children with Down syndrome um, take longer to get treatment between the point at which the spasms start um, and the point at which the first treatment is administered. Um, and there's a number of reasons why that might be. It might be that um, because our babies tend to be a bit hypertonic, because they tend to be a bit floppier, um, the movements um, present slightly differently in some children, um, or they're a bit less obvious. It might be that our children tend to be a bit more prone to reflux, um, and therefore infantile spasms might be misdiagnosed, they might be diagnostic overshadowing, um, and it's it's regarded as reflux rather than um, the seizure activity that it is. It might be that one of the red flags being developmental delay or regression is harder to spot in um, children where we know that's already going to be a factor um, due to Down syndrome. Um, so we also need to be aware of why our concerns might not be taken as seriously um, and they might they might be you might come across a, a doctor who's fantastic and understands that your child's at higher risk and listens to your concerns and that's great um, but we also I think need to be alert to the idea that children with Down syndrome should have a lower threshold for um, receiving EEG because they're at higher risk. Um, it might be that you need to push back if um, clinicians are suggesting that it's due to things like reflux, it's developmental delays or regression if they've lost skills, it's due to the Down syndrome. Um, that's diagnostic overshadowing and infantile spasms is something that we need to take really, really seriously and be prepared to um, push back if, if we have concerns and those aren't being listened to. Um, there's good news and the good news is that for whatever reason and I don't think they know what this reason is but um, our babies seem to respond better to treatment than some other groups and often the seizures stop more quickly and are less likely to recur and that's really really important because the chaotic brain activity that goes along with the movements in infantile spasms is what causes or what can cause real damage um, and real problems with development and the quicker that spasms are brought under control um, which is why we really emphasize um, that infantile spasms are an emergency need to be treated quickly um, the less likely there is to be that ongoing um, damage or developmental um, problems. Um, so normally this treatment is a combination of two drugs, um, high dose steroids and a very strong epilepsy drug called Vigabatrin. And trials show that this combination is the most likely combination to stop the seizures and to stop them quickly. Um, obviously, 
if your child is diagnosed with infantile spasms, you need to have a conversation with um, your child's doctors about what that um, treatment looks like um, and what treatment's appropriate for them. But the the first line treatment, the the treatment that the evidence suggests works most effectively um, for children, including children with Down syndrome, with infantile spasms is high dose steroids and vigopatron. Um, so if only one of those is being suggested, you might want to ask questions as to why that is and make sure that there's a clinical reason behind it. Um, the drugs can be quite hard going for us. Um, when our daughter was on the steroids, she hardly slept, which was quite tough. Um, she puffed up, she was incredibly grumpy, her immune system was didn't exist. Um, so she got a couple of infections as well. Um, it was it was a really tricky time and the Vigabatrin, um had also had some quite significant side effects, um, particularly on her muscle tone, which she became very floppy and she was never a hypertonic baby before. Um, and it, it very much impacted the degree to which she was able to engage with the world. And so there was a big knock on effect on her development. Um, since she's come off those drugs, her development has soared. And it was it was very clear to us that that um, delay was the drugs. It wasn't the spasms. It was clear to us when we came off those drugs. Um, and the purpose of those drugs is to stop the spasms and to stop that being permanent developmental, um, to stop there being permanent developmental problems. So for short term unpleasantness and difficulty, um, of the medication. It was it was a horrible six months, but it was absolutely worth it for getting those spasms under control really quickly. Um, because our best guess at the moment is that she's developing as she should really nicely. And obviously we'll see how that continues, but she seems to be catching up with herself at the moment and kind of where we would hope she'd be. Um, and around 95% of children with Down syndrome who are put on the high dose steroids will have no spasms after three months. Um, so the rates of seizure control is good. Um, so I'm gonna leave it there. In summary, we all need to be aware of what infantile spasms look like. Um, they are more common in our children. Hopefully your child won't experience it because they're not very nice, um, but they are more common and the best thing that you can do as a parent is to be aware of what they look like, aware of what you need to do um, and reach out on the past group for support if you need it, because it's a it's a difficult thing to go through.